five. Come more hard times. A week goes by, then another week. It's the time of year for planting, and the field hands have to work until they drop. Waller whips them past that, and they get so tired they don't know up from down. But John works with me, not each night, because he's too tired. Some of them to work in the fields can't even walk back, have to be carried by others. But some nights he works with me. I learn a whole family of letters, all the fingers on one hand, two on the other. A, B, C, D, E, F, N, G. He makes me to write them in the dirt and shows me how to take more than one of them and make a word. How the word is to be looking and how the word is to be sounding. Make it slow, make the sound each time. First the letter, then the sound, then make it meet the sound from the next letter. Write B, say it, then A, and say it, then G, B, A, G. And I make the first word, first word, bag. I make the word, I couldn't believe it. I came to make the word. Don't matter what the word is, what it means, just to make the word, the first word. That's what caused the trouble. Me and that first word. I was so excited to be making a word. I went everywhere and made the word. I took a stick and rubbed a point on it against a stone and round in the back of the quarters and made the word in the dirt. Wrote bag, then said it, bag. I rubbed it out with my heel and wrote it in a new place, bag. Wrote it all over, bag, bag, bag. Each time I rubbed it out and moved to a new place and I was just looking at it. Last time I wrote it, wondering if I could use other letters to make other words, thinking how to make another word when I hear the bold voice of Walla. What are you doing? A big hand grabbed the back of my shirt dress and dragged me up off my feet so I'd be hanging there. Tell me what you're doing. He was ugly, pale, white, maggot ugly, and I could smell his ugliness on him, white ugly. Stink of bad sweat and whiskey and smoke and fat food. I didn't see nothing. He shook me like a dog shaking a rat. Shaking a rat. I felt my eyes go to wobbling and I just about messed. I still didn't say a word. What are you scribbling in the dirt? I thought I'll lie. Nothing. Something I saw on an old feed sack. I didn't know it was wrong to make in the dirt. It looks like writing to me. Holds me up. Closer. Stink of his breath in my face. White stink. Pig stink. Don't know nothing about writing. He hit me then. He holds me with both hands, one on each shoulder so I'm facing him, and he quick drops one hand and hits me with his fist alongside the head as I fall. I saw lights, exploding colors. Don't lie to me. You tell me the truth of it and I'll let you off. Where'd you learn how to write? Don't know nothing about writing, I said again. I had dropped all the way down and I was sitting in the dirt looking up at him, but it put me in a bad place near his feet, big boots, black boots, but wrong kind of black, bad black, not good black like John, mammy, me, my mind rolled around like a sick dog. He kicked me in the stomach. But that, God damn you, don't you lie to me. I'll tie you to the spring house and get the truth out of you. Don't know nothing about writing. He kicked again, but he missed. First time I had grabbed my stomach, rolled away, and on the second kick, I crawled, ran to get away, ran to the only place I knew, ran to the quarters, ran to Mammy. She'd be in the corner, hanging, changing the grease and rag on Alice's back, and I ran to her dress and hid my head in the folds. What? She held my arm. What are you doing? Hiding from him? Who? Waller. But Waller, he owned it all. It was not no safe place. He owned all the land, owned the quarters, owned Mammy. He came into the quarters then and saw me and took me by the arm. He held me, but he looked at Mammy. Who was teaching her to read? Sir? Mammy gave him the big-eyed look. Looked like she don't know nothing since she be born. While he stood looking at her, breathing, breath, breath cut in, cut out like sawing wood. I thought of the word, making the word bag. How making the word can cause all this, and I hated myself. All right, Wallace said, if that's the way you want it. And he grabbed, not me. I made the word, but he didn't grab me. He grabbed Mammy by the wrist and dragged her out of the quarters and across the dirt to the spring house. 
and shackled her in the chain and bracelets on the wall. Then he left her there, hanging, and went to the house. I had followed him then. I had followed them across to the spring house, and when he was gone, I went up to Mammy. He's going to whip you, I said. I was crying. She sighed, soft sound, and she looked up at the sun and the trees by the white house. Birds sure do sing nice, don't they? They make the prettiest sound. It's all my doings. I pulled at the chains, but they don't give. I be making the word and forgot where I was, and he saw me, and now he's going to whip you. Her eyes came on me then. I was crying, but she wasn't. Her eyes came on me, and they were sharp, and her mouth was tight. He would have whipped me anyway someday. Some other reason would have come along. He loves to use the whip. John, I thought of him. John will stop him. She shook her, her head. He can't. No matter what he says, it won't stop Waller from whipping me. Now you go along and bring me some water when they ain't watching. He won't whip me until close on dark when everybody's back from the field to watch. The sun is hot and I'll be getting a big thirst. Don't, don't I get some water? I snucked Mammy water through the afternoon and she hung there. The way the chains and bracelets were, she couldn't reach down to sit, so she had to stand. But standing through the day that way without moving is hard. After it passed some long time, her legs didn't do so good and she sagged. And come late in the day, she was most hanging on the chains. Her arms were up and she was having to hurt. I stood and watched for a spell and cried some, but she stopped me. You take care of the young ones. Go now, they'll be dirty and stinking if you don't change the rags on them. You run along, I'd be fine. Took forever waiting on the day. Mammy hanging that way. I thought once of running to the fields to tell John. Wouldn't do no good. Driver work in the fields, he see me coming, he just put me to work. They say if you can walk to the fields, you can work. So I'd be working and not here and John couldn't do nothing anyway. They just keep him there no matter what I say. So nothing. Waller, he keep his white maggot on himself in the White House all the day. Don't come out but once to see me standing by Mammy. The sun works across the sky, cooking her. I brought her water again and a piece of cornbread I've been saving since morning food. But she shook her head. I'll just throw it up when he comes to whipping me. You go now. Get the rags ready for my back and the salt. I can't. Yes, you can. Go do it. Finally, it came on to be dark, and the hands come in from the field. Part of the afternoon, I had the young ones to make a trough of cold food so they had enough to eat. They had to walk past the spring house, and they saw a mammy, but there wasn't nothing they could do. I went up to John and told him what had happened. Damn, he shook his head. I should have warned you about making words. I knew I was just excited to make it my first word. I got to writing it in the dark, in the dirt, and he caught me. Waller caught me. He's gonna whip her, Mammy. He's gonna whip her into rags. John didn't say anything. He looked to where Mammy hung in the spring house. His eyes were flat, bastard. I was gonna say more, say you can stop it. Can you say something? But I heard the door on the White House open, and Waller came out. He made gas and spit like he just ate a big meal and walked across the yard, stopped. All you get out here and watch. He bellered like an old bull, then turned. Didn't go to the spring house, didn't have a whip. Instead, he went to the barn and went inside. Come out in a breath or two and he was carrying a horse harness. He went to the buggy by the carriage shed and hooked the harness like he had a horse in it, except it was empty. Then he went back to the spring house, looked at Mammy. You gonna tell me who's teaching them to read? Mammy been hanging, but she stood now and gave him the big eye again. I don't know nothing about reading or writing. God damn you. He hit her with his fist. Then he unhooked her from the chains and ripped her clothes from off her body and dragged her naked to the harness. Put it on. I feel like I ride in the buggy. I feel like I ride in the buggy. Mammy put the collar around her neck with the lines going back to the buggy. Stood there, looking up at the sky. I couldn't keep my eyes down. But the men did. They didn't look at her, looked at the ground. Waller climbed into the buggy and sat in the seat, reached under the footboard and come up with a whip. Pull, damn you. The whip snaked out from the buggy seat like it was alive and flicked and blood come on Mammy's shoulder. Big cut. 
She started pulling, but it wasn't good enough. She strained and heaved in the wagon it moved and Wallach kept saying, faster, damn it, faster. And the whip come again and again, blood running down her back and the buggy moving across the yard. And I hear him back of me, she don't know nothing. It was me that taught the girl the letters. He turned and John was standing there. He had stepped forward and he pointed to Mammy. Let her be. She don't know nothing about it. It was all me. Waller looked at him the way a cat looks at a mouse caught in a corner. He smiled, ugly smile. Well, I might have guessed. He stepped down from the buggy and moved to John. Why don't you just go over there and put yourself in those irons in the spring house wall? I thought John wasn't going to do it. He held for one, two blinks of my eyes. Waller had the whip in his left hand, coiled but ready. His right hand was on the butt of the big pistol in his belt. Two blinks, then John moved. He walked to the spring house and put the bracelets on. He wasn't wearing a shirt, and when he turned his back, the, his, when he turned his back, the sun caught the scars from the old whippings, rippled and ridged. There's nowhere for the whip to hit, I thought. Can't hit nothing new, no new meat. Stupid, the way my thinking worked. But Waller, he wasn't set for whipping. He made one of the hip field hands to fetch the stump used for chopping the heads off chickens. Sent another hand to the blacksmith lean-to for a wide chisel and a hammer. Then he turned to us, all standing, watching. I have moved to Mammy, but she shook her head, stood. It is wrong to learn to read. Waller's voice was loud, bouncing off the buildings. It is against the law for you to read, to know any letters, to know any counting is wrong. Punishment, according to the law, is removal of an extremity. We don't know all the words, never heard extremity before, but we don't need to know. Waller had two field hands to hold one of John's feet on the block. He put the chisel to the middle toe and swung the hammer. Thunk. The toe came off clean, jumped away from the chisel and fell in the dirt. Blood squirting out all over the block. John, he jerked the foot so hard it knocked one of the field hands over. But quiet, not even a grunt out of him. He didn't look down on either, just kept staring off into the fields next to the spring house. Other foot, Waller spit and wipes the chisel off on the stump. The two field hands grab John's left leg. The one next to the wall of the spring house, his name is Robe. He take it slow, doesn't move fast. So you can see it was bothering him, and Waller snaps like a breaking stick. It can be your toe, too. It doesn't cost nor to cut another one off. So Robe, he puts John's foot up there, and Waller puts the chivel on it. Thunk. This time it was not so clean. The foot jerks back, and the toe is caught by some skin the chisel missed. Hold it up, damn it. They hold the foot to the block. John, he's still not making any sounds, but his face is stiff like it's carved out of rock, and there's sweat pouring off his forehead, his neck, down his chest, he's soaked. Waller cuts the last bit of skin. There, that'll teach you to mess with things you shouldn't. Get a rag and some grease on that. He walked back to the White House without looking back, and as soon as he was away from us, we went to help him. The two hands carried John between them to the quarters, and I went to Mammy. Fetch the salt, she told me. Get it in these cuts, and before I pass out, for God's sake, cover me with something so I ain't naked before the Lord. So I did, and she swooned some with the pain and went down, and I frosted her dress and helped her to put it on her, and then it helped her back to the quarters because her legs, they didn't work right from hanging and standing all day. All the time I'm thinking, be a hell, be a good hell with fire and brimstone and devils cutting skin off back like mammies. Be a good goddamn hell with demons eating at you, pulling your guts out. Be the worst hell there is to be and put Waller in it.